Good to be back after some travel. Uh, I spent time in Greece and Italy walking the footsteps of Paul. And my first real day besides the day of recovery, I spent taking a train to Corinth and visiting Corinthian ruins. And we see today's second reading being Paul's letter to the Corinthians. There's a wonderful and beautiful church dedicated to St. Paul, an Eastern Orthodox church that I was able to visit. And then I took a taxi to the Corinthian ruins, what they call Old Corinth. And you get to see these beautiful um, ruins, what's left of an ancient society, with the last bit of your tour being walking along uh, an ancient road, a Corinthian road, a Roman road, really. And between that road and the road I walked in Rome, <coughs> built by ancient Romans, I learned a couple of things. Number one, Paul must have had pretty sore feet, right? <laughs> I also took this road and went and, of course, ate at restaurants, right? Now the, there's modern um, architecture and modern buildings next to these, uh, some of what are, you know, still the ancient roads. And my time in these restaurants uh, was, was spent sitting a lot, right? I don't know if you've ever been to Europe, but it's a very different experience in the restaurant industry than it is here. It's um, meant to be, uh, one of our tour guides said, it's meant to be the opposite of fast food, meaning that you're supposed to enjoy the meal. You're supposed to enjoy your time with other people. Lunch is so big in, in Italy that uh, many places we found were closed from about noon until three, or from 12.30 to three. And that's about as long as it takes you to eat at a restaurant, two and a half hours, right? It's a long endeavor. What I started to think through in having this experience was how different it must be to walk in Paul's shoes. I mean, it literally hurt, right? The roads are not even. Um, it's, a, it's a crazy, a marvelous feat of, of ancient architecture that they dug holes deep uh, you know they didn't fill it with concrete they didn't you know pave the top of it. it it was literally digging a hole and lowering stones and then covering that with um with often volcanic rocks and so it makes it really uneven and my feet were hurting and in today's second reading we read how paul struggled how walking in his shoes was uh, was characterized by a, what he calls a thorn in his side. And while he never goes into detail with what that is, I think many of us can identify with the pain of walking in your own shoes. Right? There are so many ways that we have our own thorns. And in the ancient world, with ancient gods of war, how was strength viewed? That was what God was. God was mighty, strength-giving. Those that were weak were sinful. Those that were disabled, they or their parents had sinned. That's how they got that way. That's what was the, the common belief. And yet we see the foolishness of Christianity being one of the best feats of it. How is it that Paul was able to, sh to spread Christianity? Well, as I'm looking at these grand buildings, I think of, wow, how horrible it must have been to be in poverty. Because I, I went to some places that they, uh, they called the residential districts and the rooms were, all that was left was sort of, almost if you've ever played Sims with the walls down, right? All that's left is the bottom. And the, the, the homes were much smaller than the room we're in now for many people. So Paul's message was that those who are cast aside, he was giving Jesus his message, right? They will be lifted up. That in your weakness, God finds strength. It's not in spite of your weakness. It's that God's grace is so sufficient, 
so giving that your weaknesses are what make you you. That through grace, you are forgiven, but through God's love, God enters relationship with you no matter what or who you are. Now, continuing the footsteps of Paul, I ended right in the city in which Paul ended his life, or his life was ended, um, and that would be Rome. And I was fortunate also to go to Vatican City and, and visit St. Peter's Basilica, and walking in those shoes, in, in those paths, were not as, as painful as, as some of the more uneven roads, but there was a different sort of pain that I felt being there. I felt pain that, you know, they were celebrating um, these new folks who were being consecrated bishops, and none of them were women. I saw no women that were ordained, because women aren't ordained in the Roman Catholic tradition. And the pain of that made me think about the pain Paul must have experienced in knowing that he was cast aside, a part of a, a marginal religion, and yet that he had the truth. That he was not, he didn't probably convert very many powerful, wealthy people. His message was to the poor. He was a tent maker, so I saw some of the markets in which he would have sold his goods. <coughs> Paul, walking in the footsteps of Paul is also walking in the footsteps of those that we cast onto the margins. Because Paul lived his life on the margins. And so I think the beauty of that is knowing what we see in today's gospel. Yes, Jesus is cast aside, right? They say, you're just that little kid. We, we remember you. You're just the son of a carpenter. How can you be great? What does he do at the end? Mark casts it as nothing that big, but he says all he did, he couldn't do anything in that city except heal a few people. That's pretty cool, right? If all we can do is heal a few people, I think that's sufficient. So let's walk this week in shoes that, in, let's imagine ourselves walking in other people's shoes, right? In, in the shoes of those who are cast aside. Let's walk this week toward those that, that need our love. The best message that we have in our tradition is the message of love. The authors of the epistles to John say that God is, or the epistles of John, say that God is love. God is love. Paul didn't convert people with grand buildings. Those existed for other gods. Paul didn't convert people by preaching a God of strength. Paul didn't convert people by telling them what they can and can't do and who's in and who's out. Paul converted people with love. Think of our own conversion story, of your own conversion story. How and why did you choose to be Christian? Because at some point it became a conscious choice. I mean, None of you have to be here right now. You all got in, in the car this morning and chose to do it. Something about the message converted your heart, and I am willing to bet it wasn't a building, that it wasn't um, a specific rule, but something you felt. I think for Paul, Paul felt God's grace as sufficient. That God's grace, that walking in Paul's shoes means accepting that God loves you just the way you are. And that God makes you who you are in all your faults. These are what make you human. Without those, you would be a uh, no, no person who can choose things, right? You can't choose to do right if you can't choose to do wrong. And sometimes we make the wrong choice. But Jesus tells us that our love offered to others is all that we have to give. And it's all we need to give. Let's walk in other people's shoes this week. Amen? Amen. Amen.